Is there any nuclear African country? Well, there was one, and its name is South Africa. However, it gave up its nuclear assets unilaterally, and since then, no African country has ever tried to develop nuclear weapons. It's because it comes with high costs like sanctions and alienation. But what if an African country is already facing these sanctions? Would it not be strategic to develop nuclear weapons and get bargaining power? By now, you would have understood which country we are talking about. Yes, Burkina Faso. But has it really acquitted nuclear weapons, or is there something else in the story? Whatever it is, this has created shockwaves in the West and made Ibrahim Traore someone to be feared after North Korea's Kim Jong-un. But what are the details of the weapons Burkina Faso has acquired? Let's find out. The country's fate has been altered since Captain Ibrahim Traore took charge of Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso is no longer a small, weak country, but a growing power with a greater say in whatever happens in Africa. However, it needed support in its weaponry, the capability to fight terrorism and project its writ, not only in the continent but the entire world. And Captain Ibrahim Traore decided to do exactly that. So, what did Ibrahim Traore do? Well, Burkina Faso has recently acquired military equipment, including drones and armored vehicles, valued at around $415 million. This procurement is intended to bolster the country's military capabilities in the fight against terrorism. However, it has more objectives, which you will know about shortly. The government approved the purchase after ratifying a sovereign guarantee for international business bank, Burkina. The local bank facilitating the transaction. Under the leadership of Captain Ibrahim Traoré, the government has not disclosed the identity of the equipment supplier. However, an anonymous source within the army revealed that the acquired equipment includes dronis, fighter jets, weapons, ammunition, troop transport, and comeback vehicles. The source noted that the equipment is already in use and has proven effective in specific operational areas. Burkina Faso is currently facing a significant security threat from terrorist groups that have claimed 40% of the country's territory. Captain Ibrahim Traoré in power since September 2022 following a coup, has expressed a commitment to improving the army's logistics in response to well-equipped terrorist groups. In a targeted effort to counter Islamist militants operating in the region, Burkina Faso recently purchased five Bayraktar TB2 drones from Turkey. These drones, designed for intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, and strike missions, have been deployed effectively in recent operations. But Ibrahim Traore has more plans about using it in a way no other country thought about. Using thermobaric capped versions of the MAM-L precision-guided munition, the Burkinabe Bayraktar TB2 drones successfully targeted and destroyed over 400 terrorists from Ansaru and Jama'at Nusrat al-Islam while Muslim enduring an attack on Jibo military base. The drone has also eliminated a jihadist OTT Manchi 4 Pumamrap. Throughout various global conflicts, such as those in Libya, Azerbaijan, Syria, and Iraq. The Bayraktar TB2 drones have demonstrated their effectiveness by successfully destroying enemy tanks, air defense systems, command and control centers, and other targets. These drones have garnered interest from several African nations, including Togo, Niger, Ethiopia, Morocco, and Tunisia, as they are viewed as a cost-effective and versatile option to enhance air power and combat capabilities. However, a recent incident involved a Bayraktar TB2 drone from the Burkinabe Air Force crashing approximately 140 kilometers southeast of the capital city, near Tenkadogo. Despite this unfortunate event, Burkina Faso remains the latest country to acquire the Bayraktar TB2 drone from Turkey to strengthen its aerial capabilities against insurgents. The Burkina Faso Armed Forces have officially integrated Bayraktar TB2 unmanned aerial vehicles into their service, recently acquiring them from Turkey. Reports from September last year indicated that Burkina Faso began operating five Bayraktar TB2 UAVs, with deliveries apparently taking place between April and May. What's more, three TB2s were also acquired, some armed with guided munitions, alongside a Mi-17, Mi-26, and Mi-24 helicopter. It remains unclear if the MI-26 has been leased for heavy-duty logistics work or acquired outright. 
Burkina Faso already operates Mi-17 and Mi-24 helicopters, with three second-hand Mi-24Ds delivered from Bulgaria in 2018-2021 and two mi 171 sh armed transports received from Russia in 2018. To address the growing terrorist threat, in early March 2023, the government granted a guarantee of more than 250 billion FCFA to a local bank to acquire military equipment as part of the fight against jihadist groups. You see, Burkina Faso has been expanding its military in recent years, with the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute's arms transfers database showing that since 2018, the country has received various armored personnel carriers, APCs, and helicopters from different countries, including France, Turkey, Qatar, the USA, and Spain. Burkina Faso is among the increasing number of African nations acquiring Bayraktar TB2s from Turkey's Baykar. Following the UAV's success in the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict in 2020, many African nations have acquired the type, starting with Ethiopia in late 2021. Niger received the first batch of six in May 2022. But before we tell you about the real dangerous weapon, let's first know how capable the Bayraktar TB2 is. The Bayraktar TB2 is a medium-altitude, long-endurance unmanned combat aerial vehicle designed for remote-controlled or autonomous flight operations. Manufactured by the Turkish company, it was primarily developed for the Turkish Armed Forces. The aircraft is supervised and controlled by an aircrew stationed in a ground control station, which also manages weapon deployment. As of November 2021, the TB2 drone has accumulated $400,000 flight hours globally. While the Turkish military is the largest operator of TB2 drones, an export modal has been sold to the military forces of several other countries. The development of the Bayraktar TB2 was triggered by a U.S. ban on exporting armed unmanned aircraft to Turkey. Baikar initiated the development of a new combat tactical aerial vehicle system at the request of the Presidency of Defense Industries. Following the experiences with its first tactical UAV, the Bayraktar TB1, delivered to the Turkish Army in 2011. The Bayraktar TB2 conducted its maiden flight in August 2014. The Bayraktar TB2 platform features a blended wing body design with an inverted V-tail structure. Thrust is generated by a variable pitch two-blade propeller in a pusher configuration, mounted between the tail booms and driven by an internal combustion engine. The monocoque platform is modular, with detachable main items like wing, tail boom, and V-tails. Fuselage pieces are predominantly made of carbon fiber, composite with machined aluminum parts at joints, and fuel is stored within bladder tanks, with consumption balanced using solenoid valves. The ground control station is based on a NATO spec shelter unit equipped with cross-redundant command and control systems. The mobile unit supports three personnel, pilot, payload operator, and mission commander. The GCS is equipped with redundant air conditioners and a nuclear, biological, and chemical filtration filtering unit. And that's when things become dangerous. All hardware inside the shelter is placed inside racked cabinets. Each operator has dual screens in front, along with operator interface software for real-time command, control, and monitoring. What's more, the TB2 has a triple redundant flight control system with autonomous taxi, takeoff, cruise, landing, and parking capability. The computerized flight control system conducts sensor fusion algorithms with real-time sensor data. Mission-specific controls are managed through the mission control computer system. The aerial platform is guided through various redundant rotary and linear servo actuators. The main airborne avionics equipment, software, and hardware are continuously under development. The electronic power supply supporting onboard systems is backed by triple alternators and balanced smart lithium-ion batteries. A ruggedized heated camera unit in the tail monitors flight, and all payload and telemetry data are recorded to the airborne data recorder. The avionics redundancy architecture supports autonomous emergency landings on different airfields if necessary. Sensor fusion algorithms, including an inertial navigation system, enable navigation and auto landing even with the loss of global positioning signals. But how has Turkey expanded its weapon export to Africa, offering the most advanced weapons? Two decades ago, the Turkish defense industry made little impact, 
lacking in drones, attack helicopters, armored vehicles, and demining equipment. Fast forward to today, Turkey's military industry is thriving, attracting a growing clientele from African nations. The credit goes to embargoes that forced Turkey to establish its military-industrial complex, transforming the nation into a globally recognized arms manufacturer and exporter within a span of 20 years. And this has proven a blessing for African countries like Burkina Faso. Earlier, if they wanted unmanned drones, they had to get them from the U.S. or countries that were U.S. allies and thought twice before making a deal. It was calculated whether the importing country could use the drones for ulterior motives, and it was finally decided whether it should be offered or not. However, with Turkey making its own drones and openly offering them, things have become easier for Burkina Faso, a country that knows how to turn simple weaponry like a drone into a deadly machine. In 2000, Turkey's defense dependence stood at 80% a figure that has now significantly dwindled to just 20%. The country took a decisive turn towards relying on its own capabilities in the early 2000s prompted by repeated denials of certain supplies by European and American allies, particularly following its Cypros intervention in 1974. Back in 2002, the defense sector was represented by a mere 56 domestic companies. In contrast, it boasts over 1,500 companies employing 100,000 people today. According to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, defense spending substantially increased from 5.4% of GDP in 2015 to 7.5% in 2020. Research allocations experienced a phenomenal surge, reaching 1.5 billion in 2019, a significant leap from 50 million in 2002. Currently, more than 800 projects are underway some under the auspices of the public organization, Scientific and Technological Research Institution of Turkey, with partnerships flourishing, including one with the London-based BAE Systems, the multinational arms, security, and aerospace company. Exports, which were a mere $248 million in 2002, soared to $4.4 billion in 2022, led by companies such as Aselsen, Baikar, Turkish Aerospace Industries, Havelsan, and Roketsan. Ankara has set ambitious targets, aiming to reach $6 billion this year and eyeing a further leap to $10 billion in the near future. This upward trajectory extends across various equipment categories, including electronic surveillance systems, combat helicopters, missiles, naval platforms, and mine clearing tools. This indicates a relentless march of progress in Turkey's defense industry. In the armored vehicles domain, the Turkish industrial conglomerate Nural finalized sales of their Ader Yalsin armored vehicles to Tunisia. At the same time, the truck trailer manufacturing company Katmer Solaire supplied Heiser armored combat vehicles to Gambia, Uganda, and Kenya. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. Unmanned aerial vehicles, commonly referred to as drones, dominate the skies and play a crucial role in military capabilities. Their successes in various operational domains have attracted numerous customers, particularly from Africa, propelling Turkey to become the world's third largest exporter of UAVs. This positions Turkey behind only China and the US, whose models are often more expensive and challenging to operate. Turkish drones lauded as game-changers by former British Defense Minister Ben Wallace played key roles in countering offensives maneuvering against rebel forces, defeating adversaries, and providing strategic advantages in conflicts such as those in Libya, Ethiopia, Azerbaijan, and Ukraine. Turkish Aerospace Incorporation has sold its Aksungur drones to Algeria and Anka drones to Tunisia. The STM Defense Company supplied Togan drones to Nigeria and Baikar's renowned TB2 drones have been deployed in 28 countries, including Morocco, Djibouti, Togo, Somalia, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Rwanda. Burkina Faso, which acquired ground-demining drones from the Turkish company Afsat in 2021, also possesses TB2 drones. In April, Haluk Bayraktar, CEO of Baikar, was seen alongside Burkina Bay Transitional President Ibrahim Traoré in Ouagadougou, receiving the Officer of the Order of the Stallion, the country's highest honor. What's more, 
The acquisition of Neural Machina, Edger 6x6 vehicles is part of a broader contract that includes several Neural Eider Yalshin 4x4 armored vehicles, all of which have already been delivered. During the recent coup in Burkina Faso, the Army deployed a number of Neural Eider Yalshin 4 r 4 vehicles. The Eider 66 TTZA tactical wheeled armored vehicle weighs 18 tons, boasts a top road speed of 110 km per hour, and covers an operational range of approximately 800 km. Additionally, the Eider features two water jets at the rear, allowing it to overcome water obstacles at a speed of 9 km per hour. Its armament includes a remotely controlled 7.62 mm or 12.7 mm machine gun or a 40 mm grenade launcher, with the latter equipped on vehicles in service with Georgia. The Aider can also be fitted with various remotely controlled turret-mounted weapons with a caliber of up to 90 mm. But what's the most lethal weaponry that Burkina Faso has acquired? Well, that's when things get nuclear. Burkina Faso's military leaders have signed an agreement with Russia to build a nuclear power plant with the aim of improving the country's electricity supply. But there are some ulterior motives underneath it, which should be better if kept secret. This decision reflects the junta's recent shift to align itself with Russia, a move made in response to disagreements with most Western partners. This deal with Russia originated from discussions between the Burkinabi military ruler, Captain Ibrahim Traore, and Russian President Vladimir Putin in July during the Russia-Africa summit in Moscow. Captain Traore sought President Putin's support to establish a nuclear power plant in Burkina Faso, addressing the country's energy needs and those of neighboring nations. You should know that establishing a nuclear power plant on the basis of getting electricity is what every country presents. Only then can this nuclear power plant be used for further objectives. Already, the West is in fear that Burkina Faso can use this nuclear power plant to conduct nuclear research and develop nuclear weapons. First off, the concern is rooted in the concept of dual-use technology within nuclear power plants, indicating that the technology involved can have both civilian and military applications. While the main goal is generating electricity, specific technologies and materials used in these plants could potentially be adapted for military purposes including the creation of nuclear weapons. What's more, there are proliferation concerns within the international community, especially when countries acquire nuclear technology with dual-use potential. If Burkina Faso acquires advanced nuclear technology through the Russian-assisted construction of a power plant, there may be concerns about the potential diversion of this technology for military purposes. Additionally, the alignment of Burkina Faso with Russia in the nuclear power plant project is considered within the context of strategic alliances and geopolitical relationships. Russia's assistance in the nuclear sector may be seen as part of a broader strategic relationship, prompting questions about the potential transfer of military-related technology. The timing of this nuclear power plant coincides with the drones Burkina Faso is getting. This argument suggests that many nukes created through the construction of a Russian-built nuclear power plant in Burkina Faso could be incorporated into drones to create lethal nuclear weapons and position Burkina Faso as a formidable force. Firstly, the concept of dual-use technology within nuclear power plants plays a crucial role. The technology involved in these plants often goes beyond electricity generation, extending into military applications. In this case, the specific technologies and materials used in constructing the power plant could potentially be adapted for military purposes, including the development of miniaturized nuclear warheads. The miniaturization of nuclear warheads is particularly significant when considering their potential integration into drones. Drones equipped with mini nukes could offer strategic advantages, enabling precise targeting and potentially reducing collateral damage. This adaptation of nuclear technology for use in unmanned aerial vehicles may provide Burkina Faso with a unique and potent military capability. If Burkina Faso were to harness such technology through the Russian-assisted construction of the power plant, it could heighten concerns about the diversion of nuclear capabilities for military purposes, especially when combined with drone technology. But what about the weapon deal with North Korea? Establishing relations with North Korea is more of a declaration that Burkina Faso does not fear the West and will cooperate with any state it wants. 
However, this has also come with some advantages. Olivia Rumba, Burkina Faso's top diplomat, announced the re-establishment of diplomatic ties with North Korea. The goal is to secure military support from Pyongyang to address internal insecurity caused by terrorist groups. You should know that as of now, North Korea has also announced itself as a new nuclear power. This means that Burkina Faso aligning with it increases the concerns that it might get nuclear technology from North Korea as well. Because North Korea and Burkina Faso have had a long history together, it's possible that secret nuclear technology transfer can take place. Once this is done, this technology will be used to develop nuclear weapons in the secret sections of the Russian-built nuclear power plant. Roomba explained, Resuming diplomatic relations with North Korea will allow this East Asian country and Burkina Faso to maintain strong bilateral cooperation in various sectors, including security, where military equipment will be provided, as well as in mining, health, agriculture, and research, following a cabinet meeting. This says it all. The meeting also highlighted the appointment of an ambassador to Pyongyang. Burkina Faso officially severed ties with North Korea in 2017 based on a United Nations recommendation for sanctions against Pyongyang. Ruamba emphasized Burkina Faso's previously excellent relations with North Korea, considering it a privileged partner during the August 1983 revolution. In a recent interview, Traoré expressed Burkina Faso's interest in importing more weapons from North Korea, citing the nation's capabilities in security and development. He acknowledged the continued use of weapons from North Korea dating back to 1985, and emphasized the eagerness to enhance cooperation to acquire more weapons for counterterrorism efforts. This aligns with the approval of an ambassador from North Korea to Burkina Faso, indicating a potential revival of weapons trade between the two nations. In conclusion, Burkina Faso getting weapons from Turkey, Russia, and North Korea and building a nuclear power plant hints toward a powerful Burkina Faso the world never saw before. If we connect all the dots, the equation suggests that Burkina Faso is planning to become a nuclear power with Russia behind it. This is dangerous for the West and perhaps it must fear Burkina Faso now. What do you think? Should Ibrahim Traore use the Russian-built nuclear power plant to enrich uranium and develop its nuclear weapons? Do you believe such nuclear development might already be happening under a covert mission? In the comment section right below, let us know whether Burkina Faso should become the first African country to permanently stay as a nuclear weapon. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.